So starting from February 1, 2024, Google and Yahoo will start applying their new rules for email senders. So to keep your newsletters out of the spam folder, watch this video for simple step-by-step -step instructions. So to get started with the email authentication, you're gonna go to settings over here, and then you're gonna click on advanced, and then you'll see this advanced settings page over here. So the default setting is active campaign manages deliverability and authentication for me, and we will change it to this one. I will manage my own email authentication. So the next step is to open your DNS host. So the one that is hosting your website. And if you don't know who's hosting your website, you can go to this website, so dnschecker.org slash nslookup. I'll leave a link down below in the description to this website. So I'm gonna enter my website over here and I'm gonna click on show NS records. As you can see, my website is hosted at cloudflare.com. So I'm gonna open Cloudflare to change some settings in there. So I'm gonna log in. So if you have a different DNS host, it will look a little bit different for you. So I'm gonna log in to Cloudflare. I'm gonna click on log in. And then over here, we have the creatorrack.com. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna click on DNS over here. So again, if you have a different hosting, It'll look a little bit different in your situation, but you have to look for DNS somewhere inside your dashboard. I'm gonna click on DNS, and then over here we have all the records inside my DNS records tab. So the next step is that I'm gonna click on add a new record over here. As for the type, I'm gonna use C name. So I'm gonna select C name, and then we have to fill in a name and a target. So for these values, we're gonna go back to Active Campaign, so the Active Campaign tab over here. And here we have the CNAME1. I'm gonna click on Copy to Clickboards. I'm gonna go back to Cloudflare and I'm gonna paste it in over here. And then I'm gonna go back to Active Campaign again and I'm gonna copy this here. I'm gonna click on Copy to Clipboards. I'm gonna go back to Cloudflare and I'm gonna paste that in here as well. Next, I'm gonna click on Save. So now we have the first CNAME added. We're gonna go back to Active campaign, and I'm gonna copy the second one. So I'm gonna click on copy to clipboards. I'm gonna go back to Cloudflare, and I'm gonna click on add a new record. I'm gonna go to C name again. I'm gonna paste it in the value I just copied. I'm gonna go back to Active campaign. I'm gonna copy the second part over here. Copy to clipboard. I'm gonna go back to Cloudflare, and I'm gonna paste in that value here as well. And then I'm gonna click on save. So now we added both values as you can see. And one thing to keep in mind is that we should change the proxy to DNS only. So I didn't do that just now. So you need to click on edit if you haven't done that already. So the proxy status should be DNS only. So not proxy, but DNS only. Then you click save. So both should be on DNS only. And then if you go back to settings, advanced, and fill in your domain name over here and click on check DNS, it'll show whether or not the DNS settings is set up properly. So I'm gonna click on check DNS and you can see the DNS is set up correctly. So let's do a quick test. If I go to campaigns, click on create a campaign. I'm gonna select the standard one and I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna call it DCAM test. This is the list I'm gonna send it to. I'm gonna click on create with email designer. I'm just gonna select a random email over here. I'm gonna select this one, select. I just wanna see if the DCAM is working. I'm gonna click on next and I'm gonna send this campaign right now. Send now. Send to four contacts. Yes, that's correct. Send now. So this is the campaign we just sent and as you can see, Right now, it says signed by creatorag.com, and that is the DKIM that is working right now. So, if we go back to an earlier email, so this is an earlier email as you can see right here, one day ago. So, if we click on this icon over here, you can see signed by, which is the uh, active campaign server. So, if we go back to this email here, you can see it's signed by creatorag.com. So, this is the correct way to set up the DKIM. So then the next step is to set up the DMARC. So I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to read this yourself, but I'll show you how to do it. So if we scroll down a little bit over here, you will see we have a recommended initial DMARC policy below. So as you can see, they explain we have to add a text record. So this is what we will do. So we're gonna go back to our DNS records. I'm gonna click on add a new record and I'm gonna use the type. And then for the type, I'm gonna use a text record. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna select the text records. I'm gonna go back to the active campaign page. And here they write, you can set it up by creating a text record with a host or name of DMARC. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it into our DNS records. So that is the name. And then for the content, so we're gonna go back to the active campaign part over here. And this is the content. So we're gonna copy this entire line over here. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back to Cloudflare, my DNS settings, and I'm gonna paste that in here. And then we have to change this email address with our email address. So I'm gonna 
enter my email address over here. And I'm also going to add this comment for myself for future references. So I know what this DNS record is. And just a little explanation of what this DMARC record actually does. So this first part over here indicates the version of the DMARC. Then this part is the policy. So now we have set it to policy is none. So the policy none basically tells Gmail, for example, so a receiving email server to not take any specific action against emails that fail the DMARC authentication test. And if we have a look at the Gmail sender guidelines, so if we scroll down a little bit, so this is starting February 2024, if we scroll down a little bit and here we can see the DMARC authentication requirement. So it says your DMARC enforcement policy can be set to none. So that is exactly what we just did over here. So this part is the percentage. So the DMARC policy we have set over here will be applied to 100% of the emails. And then we have this last part over here. And this part is not required. You can also just remove it. But what this part does, so let's say there is an email address in your newsletter database, for example, a Gmail email address. And if that Gmail server is set up to send DMARC reports, so a report of the DMARC, they will send the report to this email address. So and what does this DMARC report tell you? So it basically tells you two things. So who's getting your emails? So it lists which email servers like Gmail, Yahoo, etc. are receiving emails from your email newsletters or your domain. And the second thing it tells you is the email authentication results. So it shows you whether your emails are passing or failing the checks for email authenticity. So in plain English, this means it tells you if these servers think your emails are legitimate or possibly fake slash spam. And do keep in mind as Active Campaign also explains it over here. So DMARC reports are sent in an XML format and they're pretty tough to read. So what you can do to read your DMARC reports is to use a servers like this. So this is a DMARC digest servers. This basically reads your DMARC reports. So this is also owned by Active Campaign, as you can see. So in this image, you can see an example. So here you can see the different sources. So for example, Google, Outlook, Yahoo, and here you can see whether or not they pass the DMARC test, the SPF test, and the DGAM test. So I'm going to click on save. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to test it again. So I'm going to send a test campaign. I'm going to select this list and I'm going to segment it. I'm going to create a new segment and I only want to send it to my email address. So this email address, I'm going to click on done. There's only one contact. And I just selected a random email and I'm going to click on send now. Send now. Your campaign is being sent. So this is the email. And I'm going to click on these three dots over here and I'm going to click on show original. And now we have a DMARC pass as you can see over here. And if I do control F and I search on DMARC, you can also see the DMARC setting over here. So P is none. And then lastly, one other thing, we have the mailed by content as you can see over here. So from my understanding, it's not required or necessary to change this. Like this is now the active campaign server and it is possible to change this to your own domain. But from my understanding, it is not necessary to do so to follow the Gmail and Yahoo rules. And also one other thing, if you do want to change this, so the mail by content, it means you have to create a custom domain name server. So a custom mail server domain, as they call it with active campaign. So I'll leave a link down below in the description to this article on active campaign. But the important thing to keep in mind is that this is only available on the enterprise. So on the marketing enterprise pricing plan. So it is not available on the light plus or professional plan. So then lastly, we're going to set up the SPF. So the sender policy framework. So if we go to the email sender guidelines from Google, so the email sender guidelines that are starting February 2024, and if we scroll down a little bit here, we can see the requirements for sending 5,000 or more messages per day. So the first requirement, as you can read over here, is to set up the SPF and the DKIM. So if we click on requirements for all senders, here it says set up SPF or DKIM. So for 5,000 or more, it is the and. So we have to do SPF and the DKIM. So to set up the SPF, we also have to add a new DNS record. So I'm going to open Cloudflare again. And then inside Active Campaign, you're going to click on the settings tab over here and then advanced, scroll down a little bit and here you can see the SPF. And then in this field, we have to enter our domain name. So creatorrack.com. I'm going to click on generate. So the first thing, so it is a text record. So that's what we'll add in the DNS records over here in Cloudflare. So I'm going to copy this first record name. I'm going to go to Cloudflare and I'm going to click on add a new record. I'm going to select the text record and for the name, I'm going to use the creatorrack.com. 
I'm going to go back to active campaign and I'm going to copy this part over here and I'm going to paste that into the content. I think we have to delete this and I'm going to add a comment for myself for future references. And then you're going to click on save. So let me quickly explain what this SPF racket actually does. So the first thing you have to remember that the bottom line of an SPF racket basically a security measure that specifies which email service are authorized to send emails on behalf of creatorrack.com. That's basically the bottom line of an SPF racket. So this first part over here specifies the version used of the SPF. So what the include EMS D1.com part does is essentially allow email service from the domain EMS.com to send emails on behalf of my domain creatorrack.com. So adding include emsd1.com to our SPF record means we trust emails from ems.com as they have our permission to send emails from us. That's basically what this line does. So then we have the last part over here, which is the all, and this is also called a soft fail mechanism. So if there are emails sent from our email address info at creatorrack.com that are not included, in this server list. So this part of the SPF record doesn't automatically block those emails. It flags them as suspicious. So that email might end up in spam. That's possible. So the bottom line of the SPF record is basically that it is possible that someone sends an email from our address. So info at creatorrack.com from an unlisted server that, that isn't included in this list. So this part of the SPF record helps in identifying those emails and basically advises receiving service like for example a gmail server to treat those emails with caution so do not immediately block those emails but treat them with caution and at first i also was like okay can someone send an email from my email address info at creatorrack.com without knowing my password and yes that is possible that's called email spoofing so you can google email spoofing to know more about it if you want but yes that is possible so with email spoofing that hacker or spammer however you want to call it they send emails that now appear to be from you but they don't actually have access to your email account right so they can send emails on your behalf with the with your email address but they don't have access to your account so this stuff is a pretty complex topic and if you want i can dedicate an entire video to it so let me know down below in the comments if you want me to do that but it's all basically so if you added the dkim the spf and the dmark into your dns settings for active campaign you're good to go for the new gmail and yahoo rules that are going into effect from february 1 2024